Our next question is, how do we drink eternal life? Like, what? What are you saying? What do you mean, drink eternal life? You're trying to sell us some special kind of water that we can drink and suddenly we're going to have eternal life? Well, let's look in John 7, 37. On the last day, Jesus stood and he cried out, saying, <clears throat> If anybody thirsts, and he doesn't mean regular human thirst, he's talking spiritual thirst, right? So if anybody thirsts spiritually, let him come to me, Jesus, and drink spiritually, right? Now, three chapters before this verse, Jesus said in John 4, 14, he's talking to the lady of the well. This would be another good one to have for the children to, to you know, play, act on, <clears throat> using scripture. John 4, 14, Jesus says, the water, meaning the living water, the spiritual living water, that I shall give him <clears throat> will become in him a fountain of water springing up into eternal life. So he's saying, come to me and drink of eternal life. It's like, well, I don't, I don't see how that works, right? Okay, but that's why we have to, we have a 50-day festival up leading up to Pentecost, right? The final day, the 50th day, but we have 50 days to investigate and study what he's meaning about come to me and drink. So <clears throat> putting these two verses together shows Jesus has the living water of eternal life that he wants to give us. And we are to get thirsty and come to him and drink. Now physically, God has arranged it to where your throat and your body, if you're out in the desert for a couple of hours and you haven't drunk any water lately, your body screams at you, I am thirsty, my throat is so dry it will catch on fire. I need to drink. When it comes to spiritually being thirsty, nothing. You've got to make yourself be spiritually thirsty. You've got to remind yourself, I need to go and drink some spiritual living water. So putting them together, John, John, let's go back to John 7 to see the wider view of the John 7 section. 737, on the last day, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Right? And verse 38, He who believes in me, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. It's like, what? What? What, what is this all about? What? You just said, if you're thirsty, come and get a drink. Okay, the next verse you're saying that if you believe in Jesus, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. It's like, wait, wait a minute, can we stay on topic here for a minute? Okay, let's go back to the believes. That's the Greek word 4100. And <clears throat> the definition means to trust. Okay, it means to entrust. It means to commit to trust. It means to put in trust. And, and I would like to suggest that if you don't trust what Jesus says, then you don't trust Jesus. That is so simple. That is so common sense. That is so logical. But that's where it falls down. Because we have people believing in the Jesus concept. Oh, Jesus was the creator. Jesus loved me so much he came to the earth and he suffered and he died and he shed his blood so that my sins could be forgiven. Jesus just loves me so much. Okay, but don't forget whatever the rest of the story, which is what he teaches. And we've got people who believe Jesus wants to save me, which is true. But if you have to march in step to be saved, that doesn't save you. But if you're bank out robbing banks until the day you die, don't expect to be in the first resurrection. You are disobedient. You are not marching in step with the Holy Spirit. So Christians fail if they are not trusting the words Jesus spoke. And this is the missing this is the missing link. Billions of people are worshiping Jesus in vain. 
expecting to go to heaven when he said in John 3.13, no man has ascended into heaven. They're not, they don't trust, they don't believe what he said. They just accepted a Jesus concept story and they, they go, well, I, I believe Jesus loves me. Well, good. Okay. Now believe other things he said too. Like if you're a church member and you're not bearing fruit, and then you get taken off the vine and you get taken out and you get burned. It's like, well, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesus said that too. He loves you, but he said that too. You've got to put it all together. So next John shows that Jesus says, come to me and drink the Holy Spirit living water in verse 39. Now thank God for verse 39. Because if we just got the two verses with no explanation from John, We'd be out there in La La Land. Jesus says, come and drink. Okay. Have anybody seen Jesus lately? Is he out there? Because I'm thirsty. I'm going to go get a drink from Jesus. He's not out there. Okay, so how, how do I come to Jesus and get a drink? And then the next verse says, if you believe on me, you're going to have rivers of living water, Holy Spirit, flow out of you to other people. It's like, but, but the explanation comes in this verse, verse 39. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit Drink from me is talking about drink from drink the spirit from me, Jesus. Then the second verse is, out of, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. That's the spirit. And how do we know that? Because verse 39, John thankfully tells us, this he spoke concerning the spirit of whom those believing, i.e. trusting in Jesus' teachings, would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Once Jesus was glorified, I, he, he shed his blood and died, and the day of Pentecost came, because nobody got the Holy Spirit until the day of Pentecost, right? The 50th day of the 50-day count. John 4.10, Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God, you would have asked him, meaning me, Jesus, you would have, and he would have given you living water. So this would be great for the kids to do this, right? Here's the gal at the well, and she's got her pitcher up over her shoulder. She's got to get some water, right? And there's a rope, and she's going to hook the, the pitcher and the rope and the well, and she's going to lower it down. She's going to get some regular old water, human water, right? Because that's what we drink, because we're humans, right? And, she, and so, and Jesus says, well, hey, I could give you some water. And she says, well, you don't have anything to draw the water with. She's pretty smart cooking, right? So how are you going to get water? This way down the bottom of that way. How are you going to get it? You don't have something to get it with. Huh? What are you talking about, young man? Right? So he goes on to explain. She says, verse 11, where are you going to get this living water? Verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks this water that's in the well, this regular human water, whoever drinks that water will thirst again. And she goes, yeah, okay, that's pretty simple. I mean, duh, Dr. Phil would say, duh, yeah, yeah, I got that. Verse 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him, okay, now, in your Bibles, you're going to read, will never thirst. How many of you believe that if you drink spiritual water from Jesus, you will never thirst? It's kind of like a trick question, isn't it? Okay, when you got baptized, did you ever get thirsty again? You did, didn't you? Okay, and when you got baptized, did you ever get spiritually thirsty again? So it doesn't mean what it said, does it? And the reason, and it's right there in your handout notes, the reason is the translators left out two words. If you look closely, the two words that are left out are 1519 and 165. And these words <coughs> explain that what he's really saying is, <coughs> if you drink of this water that I shall give, you will not thirst into forever. Because the, the 165 is the forever word. And the 15, 6, 15, 19 word is into. Now, most translators don't have a clue what the second death is. They don't have a clue of um, 
being dead forever. So they leave the forever word out in a number of places because they don't understand how it works. In this case, they left the forever word out. And so when you understand and you translate the forever word in, you get not thirst into forever. In which case, it makes perfectly good sense. Because if you believe Jesus is teaching and you come to Jesus and you thirst and you drink of the Holy Spirit and you continue to believe and be faithful to Jesus until your last breath, you will be in the first resurrection. You will never taste of the second death. You will have spiritual nourishment and, and, and drink, right? For all eternity, you will not be spiritually thirsty into forever. He's not saying you won't be spiritually. He says, you know, hunger and thirst after righteousness. When? Now, in this lifetime. He's saying if you stay with the program and you're faithful unto death, on the other side of death, you will never spiritually thirst into forever, is what he said. And most people are just like, wow, it's too complicated. This, let's just read it the way it is. No, it doesn't make sense the way it is, right? So, hence, we are to supply. Okay, then he says, you know, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. What is, what is, comes, you become a fountain. Okay, I got baptized and now I'm a fountain, right? <laughs> What kind of a fountain am I? How does that work? What is that? We are to supply living water to other people. Also, the water becomes a fountain that springs up. What does springs up? Okay, if you walk in, you know, if you're walking across the, the countryside and there's uh, a spring and somehow or other there's pressure behind the spring and it spurts up. It springs up. Hey, that's that spring that was just dribbling down the side of the the mountain here, the hill. You know, it suddenly sprung up. And Jesus is saying, if you drink this spiritual water, it's going to spring up inside of you, and it's going to be like rivers of living water flowing out to other people. Man, this is a heavy-duty concept here, right? So I looked at the word springs up there, and. Uh, you know, 242 is the Strong's number, and it says, apparently a primary verb, to jump. Figuratively, to gush. Okay, we, those of you that were close to Texas, right? Yeah. You could throw a stone and hit Texas from here pretty much, right? If you're good, if you're good, good ground, right? Okay, so, so we know what a gusher is. What's a gusher? That's in the dictionary, isn't it? Gusher? It's when, when you're drilling for oil, and it's like drill, 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 and the drill bit gets down, and gets down, and it gets to a, a, a cavity down under the ground that's full of oil, and it's under pressure. And your drill bit cuts through into that cavern, and you got a gusher. Well, Jesus couldn't say that to those folks. Could he? This is 2,000 years ago. Nobody was drilling for oil back then. They didn't know what a gusher was. Here he's saying, it will gush up, it will leap, it will spring up, and you become a fountain, and it will develop and increase, and you will give living water to other people. And then we're going like, wait a minute, I'm just a regular old church member. What do you mean I'm giving Holy Spirit to other people? Well, what's the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace. So is it possible that you can give love to others using the Holy Spirit? Is it possible you could bring joy to others using the Holy Spirit? See, it makes perfectly good sense if you think of it in spiritual terms. Alright, so once we're baptized into Christ's death, observe that Passover, right? We are to eat of the unleavened bread, the knowledge of Christ's ways, i.e., I am the bread of life, said Jesus. Then we can know the truth of what God expects us to be doing with our lives. Then comes the doing of what we have learned. Right? Getting the knowledge is easy. The doing is the tough part, and that's why we need the Holy Spirit. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us overcome as we should, because it's a tough assignment. Romans 12:21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. 
You try that every day of the rest of your life. Right? And it's like, you're in my face. That's evil. Oh, shoot. I've got to overcome you with good. I'm not sure I'd let that. Anyway, verse 7, Revelation 21. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God into all eternity, and he shall be my son or my child into all eternity. I believe that the 50-day festival that we are in that coincides with springtime, rebirth, new life, new creatures, new animals being born, you know, the flowers, the grass, the trees budding, you know, it's a perfect sign of God wanting you to spring up, to leap, to develop, to grow more and more. And it, it's just a perfect, it's a perfect fit. You know, God designed it, and I mean, He's perfect. Isn't he? So, it's to point us to our great need to drink often of the Holy Spirit. Right? And, and again, it's like, I can't say, this bottle's full of the Holy Spirit. Who wants to take a drink? Because it doesn't work that way. It's invisible. How you drink from the Holy Spirit is invisible. You do it by communing, connecting, partnershiping with God in your prayers, in your devotions, in your meditations, in your studies, in your prayers. You come to Jesus and you drink. Jesus and the Father sit together on the throne. You can't talk to one without talking to the other. They're on speakerphone all the time. There's no secrets up in heaven. My Father and I are one in our thinking and the way we do things. So Jesus says we are blessed if we hunger and thirst after righteousness spiritually. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness because they will be filled. If you hunger for it and you thirst for it and you come to Jesus and drink, they desperately want to fill you with it. They want to help you in every possible way. So we can be filled with the Spirit for different purposes. Acts 1.8 But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses. So, in this case, they're going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit so they can be really good witnesses of the three and a half years they spent with Jesus learning about what He once done and what He was teaching. And so... There's Holy Spirit to be had, and it can be used for different purposes. God gives us power to accomplish His purposes. Now, what He wants you to accomplish with His power is different somehow, right? It's not, it's not totally identical. He wants us all to be good church members. He wants us all to be good servants of Jesus Christ. But we've got all different talents and abilities, right? Chester can hang a door frame almost perfectly, I would say perfectly, but you're still human, right? <laughs> right? Whereas if you said to me, here's a new door, I want you to hang it, and it's like, you want it sideways? <laughs> Don't give it to me, I can't hang a door, right? So there are different purposes. Romans 8, 13, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you live like regularly, like everybody else doing the regular stuff, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds, the passions, the the, the, the lusts of the body, you're going to live. So, <clears throat> hands up if you have ever been really, really, really thirsty. Has that ever happened to you? Okay, you can almost, when I say that, you can almost get the feeling of being thirsty, right? Just like I am, so I'm going to have a drink. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, I start talking about being thirsty, like the Day of Atonement. You start talking about being hungry, and now you're twice as hungry as you were before. Yeah. So, so, did you have a lot of human power when you were really, really, really thirsty? It makes you weak, doesn't it? Right? And, and it's like, well, boy, I don't know. Okay, try it out. Next week, make yourself really, really thirsty, and then ask yourself, how much power do I have? <laughs> you lose power. And that's, and that's the example God has given us, right? So God gives us energy power for great purposes to serve His spiritual activities and His program. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but He's given us the spirit of power to overcome evil. The power of love to be a fountain of living water springing up like rivers of living water giving love and joy and peace out to other people is his plan for us and 
a spirit of a sound mind. Look out on the world yesterday and today and tomorrow. The people are drunk. They are crazy. They are upside down. They think you can spend your way out of debt. They think if you, if you make the police stand down, you're going to have less crime. They're, they're drunk. They can't think straight anymore. Right? We're in an upside down world. So we need to come to Jesus and drink of the Holy Spirit so we can have God powers to overcome our life's challenges. Now, like Jesus says in John 7, 37, if anybody thirsts spiritually, let him come to me, Jesus, and drink of the Holy Spirit.